Hello again, you have got the average gamer, and today we are going item hunting. Before we I know we said we're gonna go straight to Boomer Kalanger stage, and we will, but before we do that, we're gonna revisit Chill Penguin stage. Because we've got an item here that we need to procure. You see, we're going heart tank hunting. You know, it's weird, but <laughs> this weapon just makes everything so much easier. Even these annoying little buggers. At this point, I can just plow to the stage and wreck everything. Of course, the rest of the game won't be that easy, but for now, for these purposes, oh yeah, we're going to abuse this maliciously. Besides, we want to try to get through this part as quickly as possible so we can achieve our goal. Uh, let's see, what do I want to use that? Of course, the fire wave is mighty useful too, but I'm trying not to use all that up because we are going to use it for a very specific purpose. But first, the return of the ride armor. Ever so briefly. Ah, beautiful. And look at that. We've got us another heart tank. At this point, our health is almost completely full. If I'm not mistaken, I do believe there's just one more heart tank in the game that I've yet to procure. I don't even know why I did all this. Okay. But that's the end of that stage. Although, to be totally honest, for the life of me, I can't remember where the last sub tank is. So there's something to investigate. But in the meanwhile, now we can revisit Boomer Kwanger stage. Just wanted to show off the homing torpedo, but not very useful against this fella because of his shield. But if you guys want to see it, there it is. There we go. He was turned in the wrong direction, so his shield couldn't protect him. Now, we still had to be wary of these uh, lasers, and apparently hitting the uh, sensors above them also will uh, destroy our shield that I wasn't aware of. So, well, I did a shit job of dodging the uh, tripwire, but at least I dodged the laser. through the enemies here because obviously we're on a mission and the shield is just indispensable here so long as we don't get crushed or impaled but you know just pay attention to what's going on you'll be fine just like we did last time now of course because I said that I'm probably going to get crushed this time around it's just how my luck works out <laughs> 
But nope, we lucked out. Managed not to get killed. Marvelous, let's keep going. Now the same way we plowed through everything with uh, the shield earlier and the flame, we'll be doing the exact same thing with the shield here. This time around, we've got the boomerang cutter. So this time, we can grab that heart tank. And I believe there will only be one more after this. And there we go. Beautiful. Now we can go ahead and escape this stage. And we can move on. Onward to Sting Chameleon. Sting Chameleon being the stage I tried first, the very first time I played this game as a child, because for some reason as a kid, I always had this weird notion that the forest level in Mega Man games is always the easiest one. And it's not true. Not even by a long shot. I don't know what gave me that notion. Because, you know, when I was a kid, I played Mega Man 2, and I think the first stage I went for was Woodman, and I got my ass kicked. So, I don't know what even gave me that notion. Now, down here, we've got ourselves a secret. Now, because we defeated Launch Octopus, this area is flooded. Otherwise, this water wouldn't be here, and then we wouldn't be able to make this very crucial jump coming up. Now, we want to kick these rocks out of the way just to clear the way for ourselves and do a dash jump. Ooh, I almost screwed that up. Okay. And dash jump to get the final heart tank. There we go. Now we're going to attempt the dash jump. Nope, we failed that. <laughs> but that's fine. At least we have full health now. Totally worth the sacrifice. But that's not all. We've got, um, got ourselves another secret to get. And a mini boss to go with it. So once we take out these enemies here, easy peasy. But this time, instead of down, we're going up to fight ourselves a very durable mini boss. Adorable, but not too difficult. The only problem really here is you want to aim for the head. The rest of his body is heavily armored. So be sure to keep an eye on his body language here. When he stops spinning his hands like that, he's probably getting ready to leap at you. You dash to the side and you'll be just fine. Go right under him. Alternatively, what he will do is attempt to grab you if you're too close to him with his chain on. Typically, it all depends on how far you are away from him. For example, I got close to him. He took a shorter leap there. Now he's going to use his chain arm. If he's close to the wall when he does that, what he's going to end up doing is grabbing the wall and pulling himself toward it. If he's further away, he'll just pull his arm back. Truthfully, it's best to try to keep a distance from him, and this way you can lock him in this pattern and then try to hit him with fully charged buster shots to the head. Eventually his body will start steaming and that'll be your indicator that he's about to go down. See, there he goes. Not a whole lot more uh, vitality for this big fella.
But his pattern is very, very easy if you can see. Pretty predictable. Really, it's just a war of attrition at this point. He's going up. Wow, I ran right into that. You're an idiot. Um, he kind of tripped me up. I thought he was going to jump again. That's what I get for being overconfident. But, uh, yeah, it's really just... It's about being patient. It takes a long time to take this guy down, but it's totally worth it. I'm just kind of curious how quickly I can kill him with the fire wave. There you go. And now, our final piece of armor. Now we've got the body armor, which, as Dr. Light explained, will have the amount of damage we take. Bang! Now X has an entire full set of armor. And now that we've achieved that, let's move on. Now, if you didn't fight that robot up top, with the exception of these rock robots here, there would be rocks falling from the ceiling, which would damage X unless you've got the helmet, in which case X would be fine, as long as they land directly on his head and don't hit him like an ant. But, since we've already defeated that robot, we don't have to worry about that at all. But I thought that was a nifty little tidbit to throw in there. Take out these bird robots quickly, or they'll throw these little caterpillar robots after you. Don't do a whole lot of damage, but super annoying. Now again, these... I want to say Sniper Joe is really more of a mace Joe, I guess. Um, you can really plow straight through his armor if you hit him with Storm Tornado's weapon. With the fire wave is very effective. Got ourselves a one up there. And we have yet another right arm. And more of an opportunity to wreck stuff with it this time. With the right armor, the right armor will take damage for you. You get hit by anything, and X will be just fine. Now, having said that, the right armor does have a limit to how much damage it can take before it gets destroyed. But it is still very, very useful, not only for wrecking everything in sight, but for tanking the damage for X. So you know, we can be pretty reckless with this thing, honestly, because, like I said, you got to take a lot of damage to really destroy this thing. Even other riot armors go down with a couple of punches with it, so... Very useful. And it looks like we have obliterated our riot armor. But I just won't be happy unless we get revenge, so... Took him out. Oh, he's still Oh, shit. <laughs> there we go. Alright. Onward to our final Maverick boss, Sting Chameleon. Sting Chameleon is, of course, weak to Boomer Kawanger's weapon, the homing torpedo. Sting Chameleon likes to camouflage with the background here, but the most dangerous thing about him is that he will constantly shake these spikes from the ground to hit you. Now, thankfully, they're not one-hit kill spikes. Thankfully for that. And here, he will throw his Chameleon Sting, but they're pretty easy to dodge. If you get too close to him, he'll try to hit you with his Iron Tongue, like so. It has really good range. And of course, if you look hard enough, you can just make out his image even as he camouflages in the background. But the beauty of it is, you can dodge his attacks and still fire the homing torpedoes at him. And for obvious reasons, you don't have to worry about aiming at him. Just dodge his attacks. I try to avoid wall jumping in this fight because it's very dangerous.
because if I get careless and I wall jump too high, I'm gonna end up jumping directly into the spikes. And it's weird. If they fall down to hit you, not an instant kill. If you jump into them, instant kill. Try not to spam these missiles because I'm noticing he tends to disappear before I can fire them. And even with his weakness, Chameleon is actually pretty durable. See, that spike drop. Which miraculously he hasn't hit me with yet. But it's that the pattern is so randomized. That's what makes it so dangerous. We've almost got him. Actually, I think this fight has lasted longer than the other fights. Honestly, kind of impressive. Now, you can kind of manipulate Chameleon and lead him to where you want him to go once he camouflages. That can be very useful. But Sting Chameleon is down after a pretty lengthy battle. And for defeating Sting Chameleon, we get the Chameleon Sting. Not an incredibly useful weapon on its own, but charged up very very useful so we're gonna go ahead and save the game there and a cutscene so there we go our main villain Sigma has shown himself but we're not going to go after him just yet. When we return, we're going to finish off Sigma after we double check and make sure we haven't missed every little secret because I'm pretty sure there's some stuff we haven't procured yet. So, next time on The Average Gamer, we're going to wrap up some item hunting and then we'll storm the castle. Till next time, take care.